Dan, I like tacos. <laughs> so do I. Do you? Yeah. Do you, have ta- do you have Taco Tuesday? No. No. Then you don't like tacos. It's just me, John. I- <laughs> Yeah. So I, I bring this up thinking back to when I started in sales and, and I made the fatal mistake, even though I was coached a thousand times not to, where mo- most of my business at that phase was B2C. So it wasn't B2B. I was meeting with couples and families and individuals. Too, but, um, but I was taught early on, don't bring in one legged appointments. Meaning if they're married, bring them both in or don't waste your time. And it got me thinking a little bit about the, the whole I like tacos thing is somebody that clearly wants to be included in the conversation, but they're they're not for whatever reason. Um, and it got me thinking about from a prospect perspective, maybe we meet with three business owners, but one dominates the conversation. Maybe we meet with a husband and wife, one dominates the conversation. If you exclude the other one, they will cook your deal and you won't even know it. So talk a little bit about having multiple individuals in front of you and how to make it more of an environment where nobody's standing on the outside going, well, I want tacos. <laughs> I had a sales guy come in to see myself and my secretary at one point. And because I was the business owner, he thought that I was the decision maker. And while there is a little bit of truth to that, the reality was my secretary was the ultimate decision maker. And yeah. he completely ignored her. And Hmm. after he left, she said to me, I don't want to do this. And she listed the reasons why. And I'm like, okay. And here I was ready to write him a check. Yeah. Um, So we run into that problem. So how do we, how do we stop it? Well, first of all, whoever you're meeting with, they're all there for an important reason. It's up to you to find out what that reason is. It's up to you to make sure that you're communicating with each person. Hey, what do you think about that? Hey, what, what's your opinion on that? How do you see things from your angle? You've got to include everybody involved. And I think most of us today know that if you're meeting with a husband and wife, more often than not, it's the wife who's actually in charge of any decision. And if you ignore them, you're in trouble. And you're going to get that result. Yeah. So just make it a point that everybody that's in the meeting, you are conversing with, you are asking them their opinion, you're trying to get their side of things. And if you do that, uh, you'll find that you have more success. Yeah, one one of the things early on that one of my trainers taught me was, so so when we started a financial conversation with a couple of individuals or or an individual or a couple, whatever the case may be, it, it always started with the same question. It was the, can we kick things off a little bit here once we got through bonding report and all that other stuff? Can you share with me what concerns you most about your current financial situation? Let, let, let's talk and prioritize about what's in your face now and, and hard for you. And what he taught me was one person will usually answer that question. And you best look at the other person and ask them for their feedback before you move on or everything's done. You're done. It's over. You've lost and you don't even know it. And it just started five minutes ago. The silent ones are always the ones that are the killer ones. (laughs) You got to get them talking. Otherwise, forget it. They all like tacos. I agree. All All right. Have fun today. See you again. 